Hello everyone, welcome to Infinity Learn. We are here to discuss your LTC physics weekend test. So, let us start with question number 1. Question number 1 is a stone is projected horizontally with a velocity of 40 meter per second from the tower. Wh what is the velocity of the body after 4 second? Okay, so stone is projected horizontally with velocity 40 meter per second. This is your initial velocity along x axis ux, right? And the acceleration of the body will be g downwards. Let us take this value as 10 meter per second square. After 4 second, body will be somewhere in between its path, right? Now, let us say it is over here. So, it will have two components of velocity. One is along x axis and other one is along y axis. Now, velocity along x axis will be constant because there is no acceleration along x axis. So, it will be 40 meter per second only. Velocity along y axis will be g t because u plus a t u will be 0, right? So, g is 10 and t is 4. So, it has two velocities, one along positive x axis and other one is towards negative y axis, right? So, total vector summation of this velocity will be square root of 40 square plus 40 square that is 40 root 2 meter per second which is option 3. Question 2 is a person is standing on the top of a building of height 25 meter. He wants to throw his gun to a person B who stands on the top of another building of height 20 meter at a distance of 15 meter from the building. The horizontal speed for which it is possible is, so this is building of height 25 meter and person A is standing over here. This is another building of height 20 meter and person B is standing over here. And the separation between these two buildings is given as 15 meter. So basically the height covered by the particle will be this much only he will throw this particle from this point to this point, right? So, this is the difference of the height that is the actual height covered that is 5 meter, right? So, time taken by the particle to reach from A to B will be under root 2 h by g and that is equals to 2 into 5 divided by 10 that is 1 second, right? Now, velocity u is equals to along x axis is displacement along x axis divided by time. So, it is 15 divided by time is 1. So, it is 15 meter per second which is option 3, right? Next is question number 3. From the top of a tower of height 20 meter, two bodies are simultaneously projected, one due north and other due west with equal speeds each of 10 meter per second, find the distance between them when they reach the ground. So, basically what is happening over here is one body is projected due north. That means we are projecting one body in this direction and another body is due west. So, another body is projected in this direction, right? Okay, so this uh, the direction of projection for these two bodies is mutually perpendicular, okay? So, one body is falling on the surface something like this and other one on the surface something like this. This is the same plane, but this is the same plane, fine. But this direction is mutually perpendicular. This is 90 degree. So, basically the distance between body A and body B after reaching the ground is equal to this distance. And can you see guys, this is your right angle triangle. This is range R1 for particle 1 and this is range R2 for particle 2 and the uh, in this right angle triangle the actual separation between these two bodies is equal to hypotenuse of this right angle triangle which is under root of r1 square plus r2 square right so range for first one is r one is u under root 2h by g and for the second one it is also u under root 2h by g height is given as 220 u is given as 10 so it is 10 into 2 into 20 divided by 10. So, this is 20 meter. Another body is projected from the same height with the same amount of speed. So, again R2 will be 20 meter, right? So, 
distance between these two bodies after reaching the ground is 20 square plus 20 square that is 20 root 2 meter which is option 4 okay now let's start with question number 4 from the top of a tower of height h a body is projected horizontally with velocity u on reaching the ground the magnitude of change in velocities so this is tower initial velocity is along x axis and that is u after reaching the ground it will have two velocities one along x axis and other one is along y axis so along x axis the amount the magnitude of the speed will be constant y because it is uniform motion along x axis along y axis its speed will be under root 2 g h fine because the height of the tower is this one so initial velocity vector is u i cap and final velocity vector will be u i cap minus under root 2 g h j cap right so what is v final vector minus v initial vector delta v change in velocity vector is u i cap minus under root 2 g h j cap minus u i cap so it is basically minus 2 square root g h j cap right so basically the amount of change is equal to under root 2 gh and it is towards negative y direction so correct answer is option 2 next is question number 5 from the top of a tower of height 78.4 meter two stones are projected horizontally with speed 20 meter per second and 30 meter per second in opposite directions on reaching the ground their separation is so we have tower 78.4 4 meter high one object is thrown in this direction with 20 meter per second and another in this direction with 30 meter per second right this is ground level so both of these particles will follow parabolic path this is horizontal projectile so this is the path of first particle and this is the path of second particle okay now let's say this is range r1 for first particle and this is range r2 for second particle so separation on reaching the ground between these two particles is equal to r1 plus r2 r1 is u under root 2 h by g plus r2 is 30 under root uh, 2 h by g after solving this value you will get the separation as 200 meters next is question number six a particle is projected horizontally from the top of the tower the trajectory is the trajectory is parabola right so correct answer is option two question number seven for a projectile the ratio of maximum height reached to the square of the time of flight is maximum height is given by u square sine square theta divided by 2g and time square will be 2u sine theta divided by g whole square so it is 4 u square sine square theta divided by g square fine now let's take the ratio maximum height to time of flight so let's divide these two equations you'll get h upon t square as u square sine square theta divided by 2g divided by 4 u square sine square theta divided by g square this two quantities will cancel so we have uh, g upon this value will be g upon 8 that is 5 let's take the value of g as 5 so it is 10 by 8 so it is 5 by 4 which is option 1 next question is a stone is projected with a velocity of 10 root 2 meter per second at an angle of 45 degree to the horizontal the average velocity of stone during its time of flight is so average velocity is given by displacement total displacement divided by time taken right so look at this path of a projectile this is the path so this is the final displacement of the particle that is equals to range and this range is given by u cos theta into time of flight right so basically displacement is u cos theta into time of flight divided by total time is equal to time of flight right so it is again u cos theta so correct answer is uh, 10 root 2 into cos 45 which is 1 by root 2 so it is 10 meter per second 
which is option 1. Next is the horizontal range of the projectile is 4 root 3 times the uh, maximum height, the, what is the angle of projection? So, horizontal range r upon h is given as 4 upon 10 theta. Now, range is 4 root 3 times its maximum height. So, range is equals to 4 root 3 times maximum height is equals to 4 upon 10 theta. So, you can see that 10 theta is 1 by root 3 and it is when theta is equals to 30 degree. So, correct answer is option 4. Next is an aluminum ball and an iron ball B of same volume are thrown horizontally with the same velocity from the top of a tower of certain height. Neglecting air resistance, we need to find which of the following options are correct. So basically, when you look at the uh, horizontal motion, horizontal projectile, balls will follow this path. This is initial velocity. So, time taken by the particle to reach the ground is under root 2 h by g and the range of the particle is given by um, u times time taken that is under root 2 h by g and these two expressions are independent of the mass, density, volume, etc. Right? So, you can see that both of this ball will reach this uh, ground at the same time because height is same for both the particles and u is same for both, both the particles. Right? And Simultaneously, uh, at the same time, the range will be same for both the particles. So, correct answer is option 3. Both reach the ground at the same time and at the same distance from the tower. Next is question number 11. A projectile is thrown into space so as to have the maximum possible horizontal range equal to 400 meter. Taking the point of projection as the origin, the coordinates of the point where the velocity of the projectile is minimum are. This is x axis, this is y axis, this is the path of the projectile, right? Now, uh, this point is 0, 0. At the highest point, projectile will have minimum velocity that is equals to u cos theta. So, we need to find the coordinate of this point at the highest point, right? So, uh, y coordinate will be equal to the maximum height and x coordinate will be equal to r by 2 because it will be exactly at the midpoint, right? Okay. Now, horizontal range is maximum. That means the angle of projection is 45 degree, right? So, r upon h is equals to 4 upon 1045 which is 1. So, h is equals to r by 4. r is 400 divided by 4 is equals to 100 meter is the maximum height. So, this coordinate y coordinate is 100 meter and complete range is 400 meter. So, its half value will be 200 meter. So, x coordinate will be 200 and y coordinate will be 100 which is option 2. Next is question number 12. A body is thrown horizontally with the velocity of v meter per second from the top of a tower of height 2h reaches the ground in t seconds. If another body double the mass is thrown horizontally with a velocity of 5v from the top of another tower of height 8h, it reaches the ground in a time of. So, uh, let us consider body 1 first. Okay. So, uh, its time for reaching the ground is t and it is given by uh, under root 2h by g. Right. For the second body, second body uh, is it is under root 2 let us say it is t dash and it is under root 2 h is 8 h divided by g right and the height over here is 2 h. So, it is under root 2 into 2 h divided by g. So, it will be uh, 2 times under root h by g right and this is equal to t. So, h by g under root will be t by 2 right. In this case, you can uh, take this 16 out of a square root sign. So, it will be 4 under root h by g, but the value of under root h by g is t by 2. So, it is 4 into t by 2 that is equal to 2t. So, second body will take a time of 2t in reaching the ground. That is option 1. Next is oblique projectile motion consists of, okay. So, uh, this is your oblique projectile motion. So, we need to find the you know type of motion in horizontal and vertical direction for this type of motion. So, uh, motion of vertically thrown up body and horizontal motion with uniform velocity, okay, 
right. Uh, yes, this statement is correct because uh, this is nothing but the mixture of two motions, one is along x axis and other one is along y axis. Uh, along x axis the velocity of the particle remains constant that is u cos theta. So, along horizontal direction its motion is uniform motion. Along y axis it is same as that of the motion of a vertically thrown up object, right. So, yes correct answer is option 1. Next is uh, the x and y coordinates of a particle at any time t are given by x is equals to 7 t plus 4 t square and y is equals to 5 t. Where x and y are the uh, are in meters and t is in second, the acceleration of the particle at 5 second is. So, if we differentiate this x will get velocity along x axis that is 7 plus 8 t and on further differentiating this value you will get acceleration along x axis that is 0 plus 8. Similarly, if you differentiate y, you will get velocity along y axis that is 5 and on further differentiating this value, you will get acceleration along y axis that is 0. This particle has only one acceleration that is along x axis which is equal to 8 meter per second square. Next is question number 15, two bodies are thrown up, one at an angle of 45 degree and other 60 degree to the horizontal. If both bodies attain the same vertical height, then the ratio of projected speed of the first projectile to that of the second projectile is. So, we have two bodies, one is projected at an angle of 45, another one is projected at an angle of uh, 60 degree. Uh, they attain the same height. Let us say initial velocity of projection of this body is u1 and for this body is u2. So, let us equate the height for both the bodies. So, it is u1 square sin square 45 divided by 2g is equals to u2 square sin square 60 degree which is 3 by 4 divided by 2g. So, you can see that u1 square divided by u2 square is equals to 3 by 2. So, u1 by u2 will be square root of 3 by 2 which is option 3. Next is a ball is projected horizontally from the top of a building 19.6 meter high if the line joining the point of projection to the point where it hits the ground makes an angle of 45 degree to the horizontal the initial velocity of the ball is. So, we have this a uh, height from which the body is uh, thrown with some initial velocity u in the horizontal direction. Now, after striking the ground, it will reach somewhere over here. Okay. So, according to this question, this point and this point, if you join this two points, this line which is joining this two points is making an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal. This is 90 degree and this is also 45 degree, right. So, this is your isosceles right angle triangle that means this two sides are equal that means height is equals to range. So, height is 19.6 meter then range is also 19.6 meter, right. So, you can apply this equation range is equals to u under root 2 h by g 19.6 is equals to u under root 2 19.6 divided by 9.8. Right. So, after solving this equation, you will get the value of u as 9.8 meter per second, which is option 2. Next is two thin uh, wood screens A and B are separated by 200 meter. Okay. We have two screens A and B and these two screens are separated by 200 meter. Okay. Uh, a bullet is traveling horizontally at a speed of 600 meter per second hits the screen A, penetrates through it and finally emerges out of uh, out from B making hole in A and B. If the resistance of the air and wood are negligible, the difference of height of the holes in A and B is. So, let us say this is the bullet, it is traveling through this sheet, uh, A is 600 meter per second and uh, after penetrating B, it will emerge out of it, right. So, this is the let us say path followed by the particle, this is the range and let us say this is the height, okay. So, this is nothing but the horizontal projectile motion. So, uh, in this case, you can see that uh, 
time will be range upon u. So, uh, it will be uh, 200 divided by u is 600, so it is 1 by 3 second. But this time is also equal to under root 2 h by g. So, if you square this value, it will become 1 upon 9 that is 2 h by g and h is equals to g upon 18, right. And g is 9.8, so it is 9.8 divided by 18 and after solving this value, you will get option 2 that is 49 divided by 90 meter. Next is the coordinates of a moving particle at any time t are given by x is equals to alpha t cube and y is equals to beta t cube. The speed of the particle at time t is given by. So, on differentiating this value, you will get velocity along x axis that is 3 alpha t square. On differentiating this value, you will get velocity along y axis that is 3 beta t square. Now, net velocity will be square root of v x square plus v y square. So, it is square root of 3 alpha t square whole square plus 3 beta t square whole square, right. And uh, you can take 3 t square common, so it is 3 t square outside square root of alpha square plus beta square. And this is your uh, option 4. Next question is, question number 19. Uh, if a body is thrown at some angle from the ground, the magnitude of change in velocity of a body in 5 seconds, if it is still in A is, so we have this equation, V vector is equals to U vector plus A vector into T, so V vector minus U vector is equals to A vector into T and you can find the magnitude using this equation, A vector magnitude is 10 and time is given as 5, so 50 meter per second is the correct answer. Next is, during oblique projectile motion, the angle between velocity and acceleration. So, we have path of the projectile, something like this, right? Initial velocity is u, let us say, and the angle is theta. This is the direction of g, right? This angle is 90 degree. So, total angle between acceleration and velocity is 90 plus theta when you just throw this body. At the highest point, this angle decreases to 90 degree and at the final point it will strike with the same angle in downward direction. So, this is the value direction of g. So, this remaining angle will be 90 minus theta. So, you can see that the angle of projection is continuously changing from 90 plus theta to 90 minus theta. So, correct answer is option 2. It decreases continuously. Fine. Next is question number 21, the path of oblique projectile is, it is a parabola, right? You can find this thing out using the equation y is equals to x tan theta minus half g x square upon u square cos square theta. This is the equation of trajectory and this is also the equation of parabola, uh, right? So, path of the trajectory will be parabola. Next is question number 22, the correct statement related to a thermodynamic work done W is. So, first is it is defined as uh, integration P dV which is true. W is positive if the system expands, yes, if system expands that means its volume will increase, right. So, dV will be positive and W will be positive. So, this statement is also correct. Third one is W is negative if the system contracts. If system contracts, that means dv will be negative, right? So, w will be negative. So, third one is also correct. So, fourth one, all of the above is the correct answer. Next is question number 23. A bullet made of lead moving with velocity v hits a wall. Its 50 percent kinetic energy is converted into heat, then increase in temperature will be. So, basically, uh, it is half of the kinetic energy, that means half mv squares a uh, 50 percent value will convert into m s delta theta into j, right. So, m will cancel this m. So, we have uh, v square divided by 4 is equals to s j delta theta. So, change in temperature delta theta will be v square upon 4 s j which is option 2. Next is Internal energy is a path function while heat is not, okay. 
second option is heat is path function while internal energy is not third both heat and internal energies are path function and fourth one is both heat and internal energy are not path function so we need to find the correct statement over here correct statement is two heat is a path function while internal energy is a state function heat and work done are path function but internal energy is a state function right so correct answer is option two next is Pick out the correct statement for the following pairs of work and heat. Work is minus 500 joule and Q is equals to 0, then internal energy decreases. So, let us use first law of thermodynamics, okay. Heat is equals to work done plus internal energy change, okay. Now, work done, if Q is equals to 0, then work done is equals to minus delta U, that is minus of uh, or you can say delta u is equals to minus of work done. So, delta u will be 500 joules. So, if delta u is positive, that means internal energy is increasing. Change in internal energy is positive. So, it increases, not decreases. Fine. Uh, next is w is minus 100 joule and q is equals to minus 100 joule. So, it is minus 100 is equals to minus 100 plus delta u. So, delta u using this equation will be 0. That means internal energy is constant, right. So, this statement is also false. Third statement is w is equals to 0, q is equals to minus 200 and u is constant, okay. w is equals to 0, q is equals to minus 200 plus delta u. So, delta u is negative, right? That means internal energy of the system is decreasing. So, this is also false. Last statement, w is equals to 300 plus delta u is equals to heat that is 500. So, delta u is equals to 200 and change in internal energy is positive. That means internal energy of the system is increasing. So, correct answer is option 4. Next question, zeroth law of thermodynamics represents what? Part A, concept of temperature, yes. State of thermal equilibrium of a system, okay. And third one is that heat is a form of energy. So, out of these three statements, one and two are correct, right. Zeroth law of thermodynamics uh, represents concepts of temperature as well as the uh, concept of thermal equi equilibrium. So, correct answer is option 1, both A and B are correct. Next is, if the heat of 110 joule is added to a gaseous system and change in internal energy is 40 joules, then the amount of external work done is, uh, we are adding the heat to the system, that means this heat is positive and that is equals to W plus delta U. Right, uh, change in internal energy is 40, so W is equals to 110 minus 40 and work done will be uh, <coughs> 70 joules which is option 2. Question number 28, a perfect gas goes from state A to another state B by absorbing this of heat and doing 10 into 10, uh, 6 into 10 power 5 joule of external work. Okay. So, using this equation, you can find delta U that is the change in internal energy of the system that is Q minus W. Q is 8 into 10 power 5 minus W is 6 into 10 power 5. So, it is 2 into 10 power 5 joule, right. Now, in the same, uh, between two same state, uh, Another process is used in which it absorbs 10 power 5 joule of heat and in the second process we need to find the work done or work uh, done by the gas or work done on the gas is what, right. So, uh, again internal energy is a state function. So, if states initial and final states are same that means internal energy will be same. So, you can use the same amount of internal energy for the second process, right. So, uh, uh, w will be Q minus delta U Q. It is absorbing 10 power 5 joule of heat, right? That means it will be positive, that is 10 power 5 minus delta U, that is 2 into 10 power 5. So, W will be minus 10 power 5 joule, right? And it is minus, that means work is done on the gas. So, correct answer is option 2. Work done on the gas is 10 power 5 joule. Next is, if a bullet is suddenly stopped 
then rise in its temperature is independent of. So, it, if a bullet is suddenly stopping that means it is a kinetic energy is converting into the thermal energy right. So, you can see that ki m s delta theta is equals to half m v square. So, rise in temperature delta theta will be v square upon 2 s right which is independent of the mass of the bullet right. So, correct answer is option 1. Next is 32, the first law of thermodynamic incorporates the concepts of equivalence of heat and work, conservation of heat and conservation of energy. So, uh, yes, it, it explains the equivalence of heat and work and conservation of energy. So, correct answer is option 3, both A and C are true. Next is 33, in a thermodynamic process, the pressure of a certain mass of a gas is changed in such a way that 30 joule heat is released from it and 10 joule is of work done, a work is done on the gas. If the initial internal energy of the system is 30 joule, then final internal energy is. So, we can apply first law of thermodynamics that is Q is equals to W plus U final minus U initial, right. Now, heat is released from it that is 30. So, it will be minus 30 work is done on the gas. So, it will be minus 10 plus u final is not known minus u initial is 30, right. So, it is minus 20 is equals to u final minus 30. So, u final will be 30 minus 20 that is 10 joule. Next question is 34. A system absorbs 1000 calories of heat and does 1675 joule of external work, right. And J is 1 point, uh, 4.18 joule per calorie, then the change in internal energy of the system is. So, heat absorbed by the system is 1 triple 0 into 4.18 joule, okay. And it does 1675 joule of external work. So, W is also positive, which is 1675 joule. Uh, then we need to calculate delta u. So, we can apply delta u is equals to q minus w that is uh, 4180 minus 1675 and this is equivalent to 2505 joule. Next is question number 35. A given mass of a gas expands from the state A to B by the three parts 1, 2 and 3. W1, W2 and W3 are uh, respectively be the work done in three parts, then which of the following order is correct, right? So, basically work done is area under PV graph. So, if you look at this first process, this is the area under PV graph. Uh, for second process, area will be more and for third process, area will be maximum, right? So, W3 is greater than W2 is greater than W1, which is option 2. Next is question number 36, match the following in list A and list 2 for a projectile where R is range, H is maximum height and theta is angle of projection and T is time of flight. So, for part A, for maximum height to become maximum, so maximum height is given by u square sin square theta divided by 2g. If this height is maximum, that means sin square theta should be maximum and sin square theta is maximum when the angle is 90 degree. So, correct answer for this one is H. For maximum range, theta should be 45 degree. So, for B we have E. For R is equals to H, 4 should be tan theta. So, tan uh, theta is tan inverse 4. So, for C we have F and for GT square is equals to 4R, only one option is left, uh, left that is tan inverse 2, right? So, uh, you can, uh, you know, equate this value. So, g t square is 2u sin theta divided by g whole square is equals to 4r that is 2u square sin theta cos theta divided by g, okay. So, uh, see this is 4. So, let us solve it further. So, this is g 4u square sin square theta divided by g square and that is equals to 4 times 2 u square sin theta cos theta divided by g. So, this g will cancel this g 
right and this will cancel this this 4 will cancel this 4 u square will cancel u square sin theta will cancel this sin theta so we have tan theta is equals to 2 and theta is equals to tan inverse 2 right so for d we have g option so correct match is option 1 next is question number 37 a ball rolls off the top of a staircase with a horizontal velocity of 4.5 meter per second if the steps are 0.2 meter high and 0.3 meter broad and g is 10 meter per second square then the ball will strike the nth step where n is equal to so basically uh, range this is the case of horizontal projection projectile so range is equals to u under root 2 h by g right range is equals to n into width that is 0.3 is equals to u is 4.5 into square root of 2 uh, into n into h height is 0 0.2 divided by g is 10 ok now uh, let us uh, this will be your 15 ok let us take square on both the sides so we have n square is equals to 15 into 15 into 2 into n into 0 0.2 divided by 10 right this n will cancel this n so we have this uh, 50 then we have this is uh, 10 and this is 3 and <clears throat> this is 5 and this is again 3 so n is equals to 9 this is the value of n that is equals to 9 which is option 3 next is question number 38 a person throws a stone with a velocity 10 meter per second at an angle of 10 theta is equals to 3 by 4 to the horizontal from a point at a distance of 8 meter from the wall the stone just passes over the wall the height of the ball is okay so uh, let us say this is the path of the projectile something like this and the angle of projection is uh, tan inverse 3 by 4 okay tan theta is 3 by 4 so using right angle triangle you can calculate the value of sin theta that is uh, 3 by 5 and cos theta as 4 by 5 okay now the stone just passes over the wall let us say this is the wall and height of this wall is h okay fine uh, and uh, it is at a distance of 8 meter the point of projection is at a distance of 8 meter right and initial velocity is 10 meter per second so uh, let us apply equation of trajectory y is equals to x tan theta minus g by 2 x square upon u square cos square theta so x is 8 tan theta is 3 by 4 minus g is 10 divided by 2 x is 8 into 8 divided by u square that is 10 into 10 into cos square theta that is 4 into 4 divided by 5 into 5 right so it will be uh, 6 minus we have uh, this one this one and uh, this is 5 so 6 minus 5 that is equals to 1 meter so height of the wall is equal to 1 meter which is option 2 next is a gun fires a bullet at a speed of 140 meter per second if the bullet is to hit a target at the same level as the gun and at 1 kilometer distance the angle of projection is so basically uh, range is given that is equals to 1 kilometer and we need to find the angle of projection okay so um, range which is 1000 meter is equals to u square uh, into sine 2 theta divided by g that is 9.8 so after solving this equation you will get sine 2 theta is 1 by 2 so 2 theta will be um, 30 degree and theta will be 15 degree so this is the angle of projection but uh, none of the option has 15 degree in it right but we know that for two angles the range will be same that is for theta and 90 minus theta so if theta is 15 degrees and 90 minus theta will be 75 degrees so correct answer is option 2 next is question number 40 an enemy plane is flying horizontally at an altitude of 2 kilometer with a speed of 300 meter per second an army man with an anti-aircraft gun on the ground sights the enemy plane and it is directly overhead and fires a shell 
with a muzzle speed of 600 meter per second. So one person is standing over here. He fires a shell with a speed of 600 meter per second. At what angle with the vertical should the gun be fired so that it hits the plane? Okay, let's say this angle is theta and this component is 600 sine theta. So horizontal distance covered by this two objects should be same otherwise uh, shell will hit uh, miss the plane right so let's say after t time both of these particles are over here so horizontal distance covered by a uh, airplane is 300 into t and that is equals to 600 sin theta into t so sin theta is 1 by 2 and sin theta is 1 by 2 that means the angle with the vertical is 30 degree. Next is question number 41. A cricketer of height 2.5 meter throws a ball at an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal such that it is received by another cricketer of the same height standing at a distance of 50 meter from the first one. The maximum height attained by the ball from the ground is. So basically range is given. Right. Range is equals to 50 meter right range is equals to 50 meter and uh, angle of projection is 30 degree and we need to find the maximum height attained by a ball from the ground. So basically this is one cricketer this is another cricketer and he is throwing ball in this direction and this one is catching right like this. So basically this is the maximum height attained by the ball from the ground. So if this is the maximum height from this level then we need to add this much distance to find the total height attained by the ball from the ground right. So we have r upon h is equals to 4 upon tan theta tan theta is tan 30 degree which is 1 upon root 3. So h will be uh, 50 upon 4 root 3 meter right. And total height from the ground will be 50 upon 4 root 3 plus 2.5 meter and that is your option 4 that is 9.7 meter. Next is question number 42. A body is projected with a speed of 3 i cap plus 4 j cap plus 5 k cap meter per second from the ground. Taking x y plane as ground and z axis as vertical its range is. So uh, range is given by 2 u x u y divided by g right so over here ux is the horizontal velocity and uy is vertical velocity but we have two velocities in horizontal plane because xy plane is horizontal so net vector summation of this uh, 3 i cap plus 4 j cap will be 3 square plus 4 square that is 5 so basically u along horizontal will be 5 meter per second and u vertical is 5 meter per second right so it will be 2 into 5 into 5 divided by g that is 10 so it will be correct jo range aega that will be 5 meter which is option 3. Next is question number 43 the equation of trajectory of a particle is given by the equation y is equals to ax minus b x square where a and b are constants what is the horizontal range. So this is the equation of trajectory of the particle right at the final point where it will strike the ground its y coordinate will be 0 and x coordinate will be r. So let us put this values in this equation when y is equals to 0 a x is r so it is a r minus b r square so a r is equals to b r square so r will be a upon b this is the range of the projectile that is a upon b. Next question is 44. A particle is projected at an angle of 60 degree above the horizontal with a speed of 10 meter per second. After some time the direction of its velocity makes an angle of 30 degree above the horizontal the speed of the projectile at this instant it. So what we will do is in this question we will use the fact that uh, along horizontal direction speed of the projectile will not change. So initial velocity along x direction will be 10 cos 60 degree. And at that instant it should be 10 cos 60 degree only. Let us say at that instant total velocity is v and angle is 30 degree. So it is 
V cos 30 degree which is equals to 10 cos 60 degree. Cos 60 degree is 1 by 2 so it is 5 is equals to V cos 30 degree root 3 by 2 so V is 10 upon root 3. Correct answer is option 4. Next is question number 45. A system is given 300 calories of heat and it does 600 joules of work. How uh, much does the internal energy of the system change in this process? So heat is 300 into 4.2 joule, right? And it does a work of 600 joule, fine. So delta U is Q minus W which is equals to 300 into 4.2 minus 600. So correct answer is option 1 that is 654 joules. Next is 46. In a thermodynamic process, the pressure of a fixed mass of a gas is altered in such a manner that the gas releases out 20 joule of heat. At the same time, 8 joule of work is done on the gas. Then what is the change in internal energy of the gas? So delta U is Q minus W. So it is minus 20 minus of minus 8 that is equals to minus 12 joule which is option 3. Next is question number 47. From what height should an ice block at minus 20 degree Celsius be released from freely so that 84 percent of its mechanical energy is converted into heat and it just melts as it reaches the ground. Okay, so basically uh, the total change in potential energy uh, will be MGH and its 84 percent will be used in changing the temperature of ice from minus 20 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius plus changing the state of ice at 0 degree Celsius, right? So its potential energy ha, MGH into 84 percent, right? 84 percent is equals to m s a uh, specific heat of ice is given as 0.5 into delta t that is 20 plus uh, m l that is uh, m into 80 and uh, let us multiply it with 4.2 because one is in calorie other one is in joules right. So after solving this equation, you will get the value of height as 45 kilometer. Next is question number 48. A piece of lead is dropped from a height of 210 meter. If 50 percent of its striking energy is converted into heat, calculate the rise in temperature. So we have uh, MGH and 50 percent of its MGH is converted into uh, heat. So we need to calculate the rise in temperature. So it is M S delta theta into J, right? So after putting all these values, you will get the value of delta theta that is equal to uh, option 3 that is 25 by 3 degree Celsius. Next question is question number 49, 1 gram of water of volume 1 cc becomes 167 cc when of steam when boiled at a pressure of 1 atmosphere, latent heat of vaporization of water is 540 calorie per gram, find the increase in internal energy. So uh, let us calculate work done, it is P delta V, P is 10 power 5, delta V is V2 minus V1, so it is 167 1 minus 1 and it is in uh, centimeter cube, so let us multiply it with 10 power minus 6, it will be in meter cube. So this answer will be in joules, but all the options are in calorie. So let us convert this into calorie. So it is 10 power minus 1 into 1670 divided by 4.2 calorie. Uh, heat supplied will be M into L. So it is 1 into 540 and it is in calorie. Now let us calculate the increase in internal energy. So delta U is Q minus W, Q is 540 minus W is 167 divided by 4.2 and after solving this value you will get your answer as 500.24 calories which is option 2. Next is question number 50, a gas is at one atmospheric pressure with a volume of 800 centimeter cube when 100 joule of heat is supplied 
to the gas. It expands to 1 liter at constant pressure, find the change in its internal energy. So again, work done will be P delta V, atmospheric pressure is 10 power 5 Newton per meter square and V2, it uh, expands to 1 liter. So this is 1000 minus 800 is V2. Uh, v1 into 10 power minus 6. So, this answer will be in joules which is equals to uh, 200 into 10 power minus 1 that is 20 joules. Now, uh, heat is supplied to the gas that is equals to 100 joule. So, uh, change in internal energy delta U is Q minus W that is 100 minus 20 and it is equals to 80 joule which is option 1. So guys that is it for today's session, thank you so much for watching and uh, take care everyone, bye.